This week on Movie Time Machine, an undercover cop in a mall in the police department attempt to identify each other while infiltrating an Irish gang in South Boston. This is The Departed. Welcome to Movie Time Machine, your retro movie review podcast where we take movies from the past and relive them in the present. This week's movie is The Departed, an adaptation of the Hong Kong film Internal Infernal Affairs, directed by Martin Scorsese, released in 2006. I'm your Time Machine host, Chad, and I want to introduce you to my Time Machine co-host. First, he's our living encyclopedia of movie knowledge and NES cart collector, it's James. I don't think there is a Departed video game that I'm aware of, but I'd be interested to see how that work out. And is it Infernal Affairs or is it Internal Affairs? Infernal. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, okay, never knew that. Hey, guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I double checked that one, but yeah, I'll oh, do it again. No, because I've, <laughs> say- I've been saying it wrong for years. <laughs> <laughs> and next, he's our tech guru. He knows everything YouTube. It's Casey. <laughs> and he's our sports reporter, Mr. Fish Rap Factory himself, host of the Midwest Mountain Sports Report podcast. It's Jamie. Hey, Larry Walker's in the Hall of Fame. Go Rockies. <laughs> right. Before we get into our topic of the week, let's catch up on what we've been doing since our last pod. So what's new, guys? It's been a while. It's been almost two months since we've got together like Voltron and our and our big group of four here. So what's new? Anyone have anything to share? They want to? give some ups to recommendations or anything has anybody watched the new doogie hauser on disney plus i swear to god it exists no no no, i swear to god this exists Um, it's like no i'm gonna butcher this but it's like it takes place in hawaii it's doogie kama aloha md i don't know i only watched the pilot but surprisingly i laughed quite a bit so as far as watching something with your kids i don't know chad i'd give it a i'd give it a once over okay (laughs) all right so give it a look (laughs) <laughs> it looked charming i saw the trailer i'm sorry we haven't yeah we haven't been together in a while anybody else have any great recommendations <laughs> <laughs> i do uh what do you got have hulu um been watching uh reservation dogs um it's a taika mm-hmm. uh, taika watiti like project he's like the producer of it and that's it's the thor all... guy right ragnarok yeah and yes it's, uh, all... yeah, yeah okay all native uh, writing team on it and it takes place on a reservation in Oklahoma and it's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's awesome. It's, it's uh, quite funny sometimes. So definitely recommend that. Um, Check that out. The season finale was just this last week. So kind of sad that that is done. And also just, just dropped yesterday. I believe the 20, what was yesterday? 22nd, 22nd. Yeah. Yeah, Star Wars Visions on Disney Plus, which is it's not canon. It's different um, like anime um, interpretations of like the Star Wars universe. And it's that was really cool, too, especially the episode number one of that is probably some of the coolest animation I think I've ever seen. And plus, it's like you have samurai and it almost brings it full circle with Star Wars. It's like samurai and uh, Star Wars combined. It's really, really fucking cool. Yeah, you sold me on saying that just the that it's some of the coolest animation that you'd seen in a while. Because, well, I don't know. I know how much you love animation. So I, that's the whole reason I'm like, wow, I want to hit this up. Not to mention you said it was 15 minutes long. So that's right in my wheelhouse. I didn't have anything except to say that I really wanted to see that. Uh, it's Reservation Dogs, right? That's what it's called. Yep, that's right. Okay, because those trailers will pop up on like YouTube or um, something. It's it's those um, the ads and those ones I never skip because they're only like 10 seconds, but each one has made me laugh. So I'm really glad to hear that that's good. Yeah, I would like anything Tycho. I think I love his uh, sense of humor. Agreed. What what have you been watching, Casey? Oh, man, it's been a while. I've uh, the most significant things that uh, we've watched over here have been a lot of Marvel. Um, so we did see, uh, what was that, Black Widow's movie. Uh, we watched all of the series on Disney Plus so far. So we, I've caught up with, I think we said, we talked last time about catching up with uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, we got through WandaVision and Loki. Those are all fantastic. We started on, um, what is it, What If? 
We're a couple yep. in the what if. I think that's pretty awesome so far. We haven't uh, gotten all the way through that. Um, that's been fun. Um, other than that, I don't really know what else. Uh, I spent a lot of time doing some personal junk. I, I invested in a network attached storage. So I've been like doing some techie nerdy stuff here at home. Um, but I do have a YouTube recommendation. Do any of you guys know um, the stand-up comedians uh, uh, like Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tom Segura. Have you heard of – do you guys watch their podcast or anything like that? No. The Two Bears, One Cave, I think is the name of their podcast. They're buddies. <laughs> they do a podcast. They've been doing it forever. Um, but they uh, they were doing, I believe, a series of like ads for a big show um, – like at the end of the year or something like that, like a big uh, either New Year's show or something like that. And so as part of these like promo videos, they kept one-upping each other doing a contest. And so one of them, uh, they like, they were just like talking and I don't remember who said it, but one of them was like, well, I, I'm absolutely a better dancer than you. Like they were bragging on who could dance better. And so then they had a challenge to make a dance video. And so Bert made this like goofy, like, you know, fat guy, no shirt twerking, you know, ha ha, look at him. He's fat kind of video. Just this truffle shuffle. Yeah, like truffle shuffle is is kind of humorous, um, but it was it was whatever. And so then the the thing I would recommend watching, you don't even have to watch Burt's. You can skip and watch. Uh, there's a video you can find where you you can watch Tom's dance video, but you can watch it as Bert seeing it for the first time. And like watching his reaction alongside the video is uh, one of the funniest things I've seen on YouTube in a while. So that's something I would recommend. I don't. I, I'll figure out what the name of that video is like directly so you can just search it. But man, uh, Bert Kreischer reacts to Tom Segura's dance video. If you Google YouTube that, you'll find it. Seven minutes. It's amazing. You get to see the dance video and then you get to see Bert's reaction. I think they're both funny dudes. So it's great. Is this is this the same as the Tom Segura dance video to Missy Elliott's Throw It Back? Yes. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. So if you've seen the video... If you haven't seen Bert's reaction, it's worth watching it to see Bert's reaction. It's great. Because then there's more to it. Like they talk about how, because in the in the video, they do like uh, like computer 3D modeling of this gigantic, like very overweight obese dude. And they CGI Bert's face on it. Like his actual, like they did modeling and everything. And it looks just like him. It's super overproduced, amazingly well done. Um and I, the, the story, and he talks about it in that video, that they, like, told Bert they were, like, taking photos or videos for some promo or whatever, and they convinced him to just sit in the studio so they could face scan him for this project, and he had no idea that it was for that. So it's it's great. And then he realizes <laughs> while watching, like, oh, my God, that's what you guys did to me. And, like, it was just, it's great. You have to watch it. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to check that out when we're done. Okay. It's good to be with you guys. <laughs> it's been a while. Hi. And I know. um and this is this is what we come back to is the departed. Let's rip the band-aid off. <laughs> well so remind me though, whose idea was this? Was this just because you like I feel like every episode for the last ten episodes, somehow the departed has come up. And and every single time it's Chad doing this deep sigh. Uh, like, and so is that why we're doing this is because Chad, I, I believe loathed this movie the first time he saw it. Yeah. yeah and this, this is good. Yeah. We need to set the stage here, Chad. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love Scorsese. I was really excited for this movie. I bought it when it first came out on um, Blu-ray, bought it, brought it home, watched it. Super disappointed. <laughs> And I've tried to watch this is I don't know how many times I've watched it. I still own it. I still have it. James, you probably watch this every other month. So um, I don't then, but, did. I, but it's um, I want to since Casey hasn't seen this before. Yeah, I think right. it would be good to get his, you know, quick review impression in. And I think we can open up the floodgates from there. But before we get into that, let's talk about the box office quick and we'll get to our reviews. Box office, it came out on September 26, 2006, had a budget of $90 million, had a box office of $291.5 million. So it did all God, right. God, 90, 90 million, though, is, that has to be all on the cast, right? Yeah, because... <laughs> the, cast, the cast in Blood, Blood Pink Mist. <laughs> like, 
Because I, I don't know. I think they shot the entire movie like within like one city block or like a I don't know studio. It's so claustrophobic. God, it wouldn't surprise me. That's a fun fact if that's true. Yeah, I think most of that film is actually in like a studio or something. That I think YouTube, how much of that film is inside. Yeah, that YouTube video you sent. Uh, I started it. Uh, where it was talking about like, hey, and this is Martin Scorsese's grandson, and this is Jack Nicholson's <laughs> grandson. Like, so I started watching that, and like, I thought it was like a factual YouTube thing where I'm like, yeah. oh, that's a fun fact. And then I'm like, that's his grandson. I'm like, that's why would they even do- why would they even cast him? Like, he could have played that part. That's weird. <laughs> and then they're like, and this is a log. And I'm like, okay, something's off here. And so I kept watching, 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 and I swear to God, it took me till halfway through where I'm like. Okay, now these are blatant effing jokes. <laughs> like these are, this is so. And then, it, yeah, it's pretty funny. But like, because you set the tone where it was like, "Hey, watch this before you watch The Departed." It just changed my whole outlook on it. And I'm like, "Oh wow!" <laughs> and I, and I, oh, I, boy, was I duped on that one. So I think well that's the name of the video. It's like, "Watch this before watching The Departed" or something like that. All change. Oh my god, it's so the, good. Yeah, check that out. Well, let's talk about how this movie did before we get to Casey's review. IMDb has an 8.5 out of 10 Metacritic score of 85% and on Rotten Tomatoes has a critic score of 90% and audience score of 94%. Wow. That's like one of the highest ratings we've had in a while. Yes. So Casey, tell us about your experience with this film. Well, I, uh, you know, I had mixed reviews you know going into it right so i had uh, obviously the box uh, not the box office but you know reviews metacritic rotten tomatoes uh it's generally well regarded um most people in passing have said that they thought it was a good movie but then i also had chad who really didn't like it um and i think i had heard from other people they thought i had have a co-worker who even mentioned that you know that he, he was a little shocked that that was what you know scorsese won an, an award for right an oscar that was his first oscar wasn't it for the departed that's the first one he won correct yeah. the first oscar and it's like oh so that's what you're going to win it for when he when you know a lot of people think that it's not his greatest movie so that's maybe you know that was his review um i don't know i enjoyed it i i it captured my attention from the beginning to the end i thought you know i thought it was a uh, an interesting way to kind of show that i thought that opening you know kind of showing them go through police academy and everything i thought that was really just intriguing to kind of show the parallel and kind of the you know it was a montage in a way um so it was just kind of a, an interesting way to do a montage i thought it was visually appealing and it told the story well enough to kind of understand where all these characters are coming from i thought it was interesting in the beginning uh and maybe it was just the the screen I was watching it on, but they really played the shadows up on Jack Nicholson's character in the past. And I assume it was just so they didn't have to like CGI him to make him look younger, but it just felt like almost like the Joker and Batman, right? Just in the shadows. I never, I never saw his face. You could barely see it as he's like recruiting kids to go be gangsters. Um, so that was kind of a nefarious opening. Um, I really liked Leo's character. I was, you know, obviously, super empathetic towards him he to me he was the you know protagonist the whole way i kind of was rooting for him the whole time um obviously the ending was i think i'd spoiled it for myself and i knew that you know it was just kind of oh, everybody was gonna go uh in the end so i i wasn't that like shocked when it all happened but it is so like abrupt and sudden when all of that all of them are towards the end um so that was just uh, obviously had quite the impact and emotional, uh, you know, reaction. It was a very visceral of a way to kind of just sum it all up. Um, and so, you know, we were kind of talking before the pod, you know, I'm the eternal optimist. So I don't generally like things that don't have happy endings, to be honest. I don't watch a lot of scary movies. I don't watch a lot of drama and thriller and things like that because I don't really enjoy getting stressed out you know, in my free time or when I'm watching a movie, it's like, I'm an emotional person. So like those things affect me maybe more than they should. So I, I don't know. I just, you generally avoid them. Um, but this is a film that I didn't like feel anxious watching. I, I was super into it um, the whole way. I think the, the way they presented the tension and the, and the, the thriller aspect of it, the like, you know, who's going to get found out. I don't know. I, I was super entertained the whole time. Um, I, the only complaints I would have is sometimes it does just feel like 
a super sloppy blowjob to Boston. Like how many? Let's just show how cool Boston is. Boston, bo- ah, yeah, fuck out of here, Boston, yeah, bo- yeah, Boston. And, and you know, maybe that's really what it's like there. I've never actually been to Boston, um, but it felt like let's find every famous person that reps Boston, bring them into this movie, and just let them, you know, tramps about in the most like stereotypical Boston you can see. Um, <coughs> and I and I guess the last complaint would be I do think the rat on the balcony was a little heavy handed. <laughs> you think <laughs> i i'm generally I, so remember we've talked before i'm a guy who like as soon as a movie's done i want to go you know look online i want to read reviews i want to read what people think about it. i want to keep digesting it and generally it, it i will admit it's because i'm not that smart all the time and i kind of want to think wait did i really get what i just saw like, did i understand that ending what did i see what did i miss like i can't always pay attention to everything perfectly so i like to try to fill the gaps in and this is one where I did that and, you know, I read reviews and kind of read like, Ooh, what, what was the ending really about? And every time I'd read something and go, Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's what I thought happened. Cool. All right. So I don't think it was like either, I don't know. I'm not that, you know, much of a movie buff and understand how things like work and play and follow stories as well as I probably could all the time. But this is one that I could, and I kind of followed the more intricate details of it, I guess, well enough because they were, I don't know, either spoon fed to me well enough or just, you know, done in a good enough, you know, storytelling way that I kind of just understood it all. But I don't know. I'll stop rambling. Uh, I'd give it a four and a half out of five. Wow. Pretty high. Wow. That's, Good. That's a pretty good score. Um, as far as the sloppy blowjob to Boston, I feel like whenever we hear things like about, like, I don't know, New Jersey, like New Jersey, like it's all up in arms about it. I feel like whenever like we see these Boston movies, I don't hear any feedback from Bostonians. Like, I guess I didn't hear you know, it. They probably love it. Like when we watch like Goodwill Hunting or The Town or anything like that. Like, I don't feel like I heard any backlash, like where people were like, oh, they got the fucking accent wrong like you know what i mean it's just like or in gone girl like when i don't know what's that's because they don't get it wrong they just bring in all these people from boston that's it well they're right you think alec baldwin from Bo- like almost all of these guys you know mark, mark is leo from boston no i don't, I don't think, think leo he is. is leo's like from california or something yeah can we can we talk about the accents though do you think the boston accents were that good I think Damon's was because he just being from the area. I think his was that, right that on the money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was. He was just going home. <laughs> I think the only one I would be upset I'm about Chad is probably Alec Baldwin. I think his felt a little character. Nat Wahlberg. <laughs> I, oh, I, I felt like Wahlberg's was over the mark. Over the, well, I felt like Wal- mark. Wahlberg's was over the top. Yeah, say hi to your mother for me. Um, I, I don't know. I that's I agree. His voice. That's who he is. I just he I think he's over the top, but also. They kind of make a comment in the movie about how, like, it growing up on different sides of Boston, he's like, and so that was like Leo's whole character. He's like, so then when you ha- hung out with your daddy, the fucking donkey on the weekends, you dropped your Oz and did this, didn't you? You did, you motherfucker. Like, they, and so like, they do have different, like, dialects and accents. So I don't know. I think they, it can play. <laughs> I think, I, I it's, think that's just <laughs> because it was such a slob job to Boston, it feels obnoxious. But honestly, I think they're probably fairly accurate. It's just we don't need to know and hear every different permutation of Boston accent for living. Jesus Lord. <laughs> well, I I bet that uh, I bet going to Boston and talking to certain people that have lived there for a certain amount of years or whatnot, it'd be kind of like going to the Highlands of Scotland and being like, "What the f did that dude just say?" Like, uh, I'm sure that the accents are just super thick and laid on there, like where it is a, it fluctuates. Like a Fitzy, he's one of my favorite characters. Well, and Fitzy, well, but Fitzy was like more Irish, wasn't he? He was like an Irish I, I Boston think he guy. Was. Yeah, he see, yeah, he seemed like an immigrant. Yeah. I called you. <laughs> <laughs> called you. That's, that's, that's how you spell citizens. Look at this. That's it. That's all. That's all the people you called. That's eight. That's eight. <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so for those who are listening, James can recite the uh, entire oh, movie God. Uh, from memory. So. So there How many was times this, have you seen this, James? I don't know. I've probably seen it. I mean, I'd say like 10 times. Uh, it's one of those things where when I watch with my wife, because uh, 
I don't think she's ever seen it all the way through. She falls asleep within the first hour, no matter what's happening in the movie. That says it um, all. I think that she like is like, <laughs> how long is this thing again? Two and a half hours. Okay, this is gonna be the best nap I've gotten on a Sunday in a while. Like, I'm just, so I don't know. I've seen it like probably like ten times. I enjoy it. Um, as far as reciting the lines go, I was at I think this was two years ago now. I was at my buddy's cabin and uh, oh, we were at. Uh, and just around the campfire and uh, we like, we're all just bullshitting about stuff. And then for whatever reason, like I was just like, you know, I don't want to be a product of my environment. <laughs> and, like just in reciting that whole intro monologue and my buddy, Nick, who had never seen this movie before was just like, Oh really? Okay. Tell me more about that. And I'm like, <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, well, you know, years ago we had the church and that was just the way of saying we had each other. And he's just like, Oh, you and Megan been going to church? And like, and it was just like, it didn't phase him at all. And like my other buddy, Paul was just like biting his tongue and dying over this. Uh, when I like recited this whole thing and I'm like, how on earth did he not? Like I quote movies all the time. How on earth did he not think this is a bit <laughs> like, I don't know. It was, I don't know. It was funny at the time. That's oh, hilarious. <laughs> What's um, so James coming. When, when was the last time you seen this and before watching it for this pod? So, uh, probably about, I bet a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, something like that. All right. So it's, yeah. Thoughts and attitudes I mean, changed at all as, you, as you're growing older and wiser. No, but I, I mean, uh, I enjoy it just as much as I did. I think before, I think I remember seeing it in the theater and being super jacked about this, uh, for like a Scorsese gangster movie in the theater. Cause I would have loved to see Goodfellas in the theater. Um, and so I was all excited about this movie, um, when it came out and it, it met my expectations in the theater. Like I was just shocked at the end of it. Like going like, are you kidding me? Like, what are you doing to like all these characters? Um, but I enjoyed it. The one thing I was curious about this time, tell me, and there's just one scene. I had a question and I wanted to get your guys' take on it was uh, the scene where Damon and, uh, Vera Farmiga, uh, like they're in bed and he's like kind of getting all emotional and kind of not cry, but He's telling her, like, hey, if anybody's got to get out, it's got to be you. I'm Irish. I'll take this to the fucking grave or whatever. Like, I thought, if, I think many times I was watching this, I thought it was, like, they were talking about getting up and running and leaving town, like, so he can get out of this shit. Uh, but now watching it this time, I think it, it was just him telling her, hey, if this relationship's not going to work, I need you to break it off with me because I'll fucking just stick with it as long as it takes kind of thing. And I couldn't tell what that was all about. Does anybody remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I do. Yeah, I think that's. That's kind of what I that was my kind of take on it. Is the second your, idea, your second idea. Yeah. OK, because that was a yeah, that was that. And then the next thing was, are, is our assumption that because it never came to light, it didn't matter. And then is our assumption the thing in the envelope was just his identity? Or yeah, the, well, was it, it or was it the tape? Oh, was it more tapes can, uh, like saying that this fucking cop is envelope? Yeah. No, no, not the, that envelope. Like the Manila envelope he gave to Vera for me at the end when he showed up at her apartment, and he's like, "I need you to hold on to this. I don't know. I don't know who else to go to." Um, and it, he's like, "Just open it and uh, hold on to it, and I'll get it back from you in two weeks or whatever." I think and then, to him, that was like a "if I die" type of thing because obviously, it, then he's dead. She's gonna go, "Well, what is he having me hold on to?" And she'd go look at it. You well, no, I knew like yeah. so, so. Is that his identity? His version of a oh, it was probably a letter. Oh, okay. Plus a bunch of stuff like in yeah. some tapes, like convicting sure. Matt Damon at the time. Cause it, cause, cause it like tricks he... you though, if you're not paying attention because you think it's that tape that she listens to or that CD, excuse me, but that actually he mailed to Damon. Yeah, no, exactly. So like he had that copy. Um, and then at, at no point we are, our assumption is that like Leo never knew that Damon was even a part of her life. Right. Right. Cool. Okay. And then there's a couple things like that where I'm like, each time I'm questioning, I'm like, cause they're all, they're so closely connected. Like they almost run into each other so many times. It feels like they're, sh they should have known each other a little bit more, but like, you know, I don't think they do until just that citizen envelope at the very end. And then he, and then the rooftop, and that's like the only scene I think they have together in the whole damn movie. Hmm. So what I don't know, would you... Mark Wahlberg, Mark, Mac, no, it's Mac, Mac, <laughs> Mark Wahlberg. I was like, <laughs> I'm doing the, I'm the guy doing his job. You must be the other guy. Oh, legendary line. That Rough. line's incredible. Rough. What would you what would you rate this movie out of five? Um I'll give it a four point five. I, I mean I really enjoy this movie. Is it in my top ten movies of all time? I don't think so. I but I really enjoy it.
All right, Jamie. All right. Oh man, you're bad in cleanup. This this yeah. upsets me. But yeah, that's all right. Well, because James says you always go last and steal everyone's ideas. So, but I know how you feel about this, and I'm not going to steal that. <laughs> you don't. You don't know how I feel. That's true. I don't. I'm I'm making assumptions. He, I'll tease he it. Went, I, I'll tease he went it. In, I I rated this movie. I went back and I rated it higher than I had I rated before. So. Oh, okay. Nice. And he went in with very low expectations. It's like when we all went to go see a G.I. Joe in the theater. We had the lowest expectations, and the movie was actually fantastic. J.G.L. <laughs> just crushed it as Cobra Commander. <laughs> Channing Tatum can carry a movie. Who'd have thunk it? If it wasn't for G.I. Joe, he never would have been in Magic Mike. That's right. That's right. Well, Chad, so I think I'm going to start with, um, I think, my version of The Departed, uh, how you feel about The Departed is Gangs of New York, if I had to pick a Scorsese film. Granted, I saw this when I was really young. I need to revisit it. I'll acknowledge that. But that was the movie where everyone loved it. Like, it blew the doors off of everyone. And I watched it, and I was like, yeah, so it's like, you know, there's dirt roads, and they're in funny hats. And, like, I just, what's the big hubbub? I mean, like, you know, he's, uh, Daniel Day-Lewis is clearly doing Daniel Plainview, even though There Will Be Blood won't come out for another five years. But, like, he's (laughs) ripping that character off in advance. So... Like, that's the one, like, I just didn't get. Granted, I need to revisit it. It's been some time since I've seen it, but I just remember everybody loved that movie, and I I didn't get it. It was fine. It was watchable, but I was like, is it epic? Not really. Not to me. But I, so this is like a five out of five movie. This might be my favorite Scorsese film, and all apologies to Goodfellas. This is, um, I don't know. I just think what he does, like, my family is Scotch-Irish, and... I, I try so hard not to relate to this because the Boston guys are so douchey, but there's something about like how he just captures that Irish condition or what I identify as the Irish condition of just like just watching Leo and he's just self-suffering and suffering through it and he's doing his best, damn it, but he just can't get help from anybody and that's just like kind of what it feels like inside sometimes. So I man, I just – everything about this movie works. I learn something new every time I rewatch it and this time it was – um the uh the line when uh Costigan's talking to Costello and thinks and he says you know who could do your who thinks they could do your job who thinks they could do it better than you and then I'm watching I'm like oh my god it's Colin Sullivan he thinks he could do it better than Frank that's why you know he finds out he's an FBI informant he wants to be the ultimate spy or whatever and turns him in so yeah I love this movie you think Damon wanted his job well just the way that like Costigan described it like who's gonna get Frank you know because who could do this? Who could do this better than him or just as good? And Frank's yeah. very committed to only person that could do this is me. Like it's not Fitzy. It's not. You're right because nobody else, nobody else really wants it. Right. Everybody else is content with their position. And huh. then Sullivan finds that out about the FBI, and he's like, "Fuck this! Bring this guy in." And that's when it turns. You know, because Frank would have gotten away with it if Sullivan didn't make that call. And that, that like, that's the moment where it flips. I like it. I like it, Chad. So, what's, Chad? What, what's your rating out of five on this one? Oh, five out of five every time. Five. I love this movie. Five. Wow, crazy. I've been. I've. This has been my trend for twenty twenty one. Is I've hated on some things. Like I've hated on the MCU. I've gone back, and now I think I only have three movies to watch. That I'm like caught up. Pretty much so. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. That's so impressive, Chad. <laughs> yeah, and it's been a real fun experience. Um, so that's been um then a few weeks ago we started watching the Harry Potter movies as a family, and I've pretty good movies. I've the first two I just I'm kind of whatever on, but with I think the third one, the prisoner Dude, of Azkaban, right? Azkaban is the best one. Yeah, well, that's where it's like, oh, this is pretty cool. So it's um yep. gives me kind they, of like Lord of the Rings vibes. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's they funny. They both to, started yeah, in like in the yeah. same year, but they start to get darker with Azkaban. Uh, every, the first two are definitely, you know, Christopher Columbus, which, you know, director of Home Alone, trying to gear towards kids mm. uh, a little bit, right. uh, which is awesome. Because I remember even when Azkaban was like going to be made and everybody was talking about how this is a darker story in the books. Um, like they even approached like Spielberg to try to get like a, a slightly more edgier pa- uh, pace on it. Um, so I don't know. I, that's my favorite one by far. Mm. Dude, Chet, as a diehard Harry Potter fan, I've got the super duper special edition Blu-ray set sitting behind me on a shelf. My wife and I went to the studios in London to see them. I don't like the first two movies. 
<laughs> That's all you need to know. Don't worry about it. They're yeah, not okay. that great. Yeah. It gets way better after. And actually, uh, if you do enjoy the movies, the books, as much as everyone always says it about everything, the books are better. The books are great, especially after the first two books. They get really good. Mm, okay. Yeah, I read, I read the them first... as an adult. I read I the first them, so. and I read like half of the second and I was just like, I stopped. I was like, I, it, this is. Yeah. By, by the hokey. three and four, it gets a lot more fun. But yeah, I think I just have three movies left. So. Yeah, it's like what the last last two is like a part one, part two kind of thing, I think. Right. Uh, Deathly, Deathly Hallows is two, yeah. two yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, again, right. I'm, this has been a thing in my life at times where I've been a hater and then. You know, I've gone back with um, what like fresh eyes and and changed my opinions on it. So I'm going to watch it from beginning to end. And I just need to like, OK, maybe it's not like the opening. <laughs> the opening gets kind of gets me with like the like, what song the give, give me, me shelter, shelter again is like, oh, man, but I was like, I'm just get past this Chad, get past this Chad, get past this Chad. And I feel like the first like maybe like 20 minutes, you know, I was like, okay, okay, okay. But like, once they get to like the, uh, like the, when they do like the debrief and, um, it's like Wahlberg comes in and Baldwin's there and they do the whole, like, I was fucking your wife, blah, blah, blah. She's so, having fucking your father. <laughs> yeah. Is, I don't know. It just kind of went They're- down there hill for me. And I just movie, it just feels really flat to me still. I don't feel like any kind of, I don't know. It just doesn't do anything for me. There's something about it that it's feels really, the movie to me is slow and just how it's edited. Something feels really choppy. And I just like, I always catch myself being like, I'm not even like paying attention to the movie because all these other things are distracting me. Um, It just feels kind of claustrophobic. I don't know. And like the, I don't know how you can have like that dropkick Murphy song in a movie and just not like I just get tired of it <laughs> with the movie hey. they just come back to that hey. same that same loop it's like you could have done so much more with that <laughs> so much to pull from if you wanted that you could have like you could have had a plethora of like um I like Irish Celtic rock punk rock bands you know like you could have had drop pit kick and some flogging molly and some pokes you know throw in there to give it Dude, some they really only had 90 million to play with only 90 million and they spent it all on the cast and the cast i just the the cast too like the you have this all-star cast and they just like they don't give an all-star performance everyone just kind of seems like they're i don't know it just I don't see Alec, I all I see is Alec Baldwin. I see them as the actors. I don't see them as the characters. Um, really struggle with that. And just Jack, can I ask you a question, I, Chad? Yeah. If if you had to pick a favorite, twist your arm. Who would you say did the best job out of the actors? Out of the actors, that's a great question. I don't know. Like maybe. I don't know. Gun to your head. Are you a rat? Are you an informant? Who did the best job? <laughs> maybe uh um shit what's his name uh, anthony anderson Mar- martin sheen martin sheen <laughs> oh he was great he was probably the yeah he is probably played the best part in a movie as far as performance for me for like a more of like a main i guess not a main character but a prominent character in the film but yeah, gotcha. I, um, I disagree with you at the characters, man. I feel like they play. I like when I I think about it, they play exactly who that character is. Like you might hate Mark Wahlberg's accent in it, but it, he's playing like a fucking douchebag and doing something right. Cause he got nominated for an Academy Award for it. And I think all the characters, like even Martin Sheen, your favorite in there, like his role seems very simple. Like he's the calm, cool, collected dude uh, until, you know, there's a fight in public and he doesn't want to arrest DiCaprio, but I don't know. I feel like all of them played their parts of who they are very, very well. Yeah. I'm bo- I just bored with this movie. I originally had it as a two out of five on my litter box and uh, I, I gave it a two and a half out of five. 
I just I don't ever I don't ever want to watch. We this. won them over, boys. We I, won them over. <laughs> I don't ever want to watch this movie again. I'm done with this movie. I'm done with it. I don't ever want to watch it again. And if anyone is listening to this podcast, you can write in and tell me like why I'm wrong or why I'm right, and I'll read those on the pod if you send them in. And whatever one we think is the best, write in. I will send that Blu-ray copy to you because I don't want it anymore, <laughs> and I'm not going to hand that down to my children. <laughs> Chad, I, I I gotta press you here. So, d- do you view this as a cop movie, an action movie, a gangster movie? Like, if you had to pick a genre, where would you? I put don't it care. In? Like, name. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Well, the care. reason I ask I don't... is like, <laughs> I which like which it. film uh, which film would you rather watch though? Like, I'm gonna put on a cat and mouse action drama. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. That would be fine be fun this i just is, this is live action tom and jerry yeah <laughs> <laughs> i would watch rather watch that tom and jerry movie than watch this movie the part of oh it. chad yeah. say it's oh, not so yeah. if i, I had to choose that. i don't I, i'm telling you i don't ever want to see this movie again god maybe that should be our theme is movies that make us like movies we never want to watch again and we force each other to like requiem for a dream and like clockwork orange <laughs> honestly i feel like nauseous like thinking about this movie <laughs> and oh like, my god and I went, you feel nauseous yeah. and you gave it a higher score yeah 2.5 exactly. i want to know what other movies you've rated like as a one that just make you puke <laughs> well when i do a one is like this movie is unwatchable chad would you rather watch the departed or pitch perfect two where clay matthews and the green bay packers get an acapella solo i haven't seen it before so i guess that's spoiler you know. alert <laughs> <laughs> but based on that description alone which would you rather see? Anything. I told you, I don't ever want to see this movie Matthews again. No. Doing acapella. No. No. Stringy hair, always sweaty for some reason, Clay Matthews doing acapella. I will say, though, that there are some cool scenes in this movie. But, um, yeah, outside Go of on. that, I think my favorite scene is the where Caprio is, like, following... Um, Damon's character and like the whole thing through the city then it kind of ends with um Damon kind of you know going through like the 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 shanking the yeah like the CC the close camera video stuff or yeah going through that I thought everything kind of that whole part was pretty good um that was like the only thing that really kind of felt like suspenseful or like felt any tension for me yeah I mean a lot of the stuff I just thought was kind of hokey and like Jack Nicholson's like I, Jack Nicholson. What's his? Uh, what's Frank Costello? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like, are you? He doesn't like strike any. He doesn't feel like a badass character. He just. I don't know. I just every his everything just felt really flat. And so it's like, I don't know. I just didn't get it. But well, at the um, risk of giving you some ammo here, Chad, because Frank Costello, he's getting older. He's a gangster on his way out. My question that. I, you know, I, I could explain away, but my, my biggest question, if I had to have a nitpick here, it's why did he not think it was cost again the entire time a new guy enters your unit and suddenly we have a rat problem? Yeah, good question. I don't know. Like, how did he not? I, <laughs> how did he not know there was an informant when he had somebody? I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me. There was another scene in there where like actually this time around I I caught it. Yeah, it's actually surprising how many times I've seen this where like I'm like trying to think of things differently or seeing, seeing things differently because even the one dude that got shot after uh, Martin Sheen's untimely doom. Um, and then they on TV, they're like, oh, he's a cop. And then it, they're like, he's not a fucking cop. Like how they find us. So I dragged him through the marsh. What kind of fucking dogs were those? Um no, but that one guy, like when he's like when he's dying and he's like talking to Leo, he's like and he says something like, "Ask me why I didn't tell nobody, or ask me why you didn't kill anybody." Um, this is the first time where I, I like I thought like, "Oh, maybe that dude was undercover also, like, uh, not, um, and not that they were just making him out to be a cop to make him stop looking for Damon, which they uh, not Damon uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, which they definitely said." But I think the time when he's when he's dying and he's talking to Leo, I think the idea was he knows why he doesn't kill anybody i think he says something a line like that where he figured out this is why you've never committed murder because you are a cop otherwise he's just like wounded people or beat the shit out of people again if anybody knows what scene i'm talking about yeah no i do like well the dude's dying and see yeah i I totally misread that as like i thought he died and i thought he was the body that they 
went and hid or whatever. He, the, it is. I, he okay. is the one that they hid in the marsh. But I was always under the impression when they showed him on the, the TV as a cop, like they're like, and he was working undercover for the police department. Um, because it's weird because then they're like, they're saying he's a cop, so we don't look for the cop. That's what like Costello says. But when I think on it, I'm like, wait a minute, isn't he a cop? Because wasn't he? And I have to look, look at it again. But I'm pretty sure when they show him on the news, he's in a fucking cop uniform. Yeah, he is a cop. Yeah, he's like in a state yeah. troopers. And they're like, yeah. and so like, I think he was also planted there potentially and then but i think when he was talking to leo like it's a phrasing on the sentence and i wish i had it in front of me but you know however he phrases it i think he was trying to like say like hey i i told you the wrong address i know why you didn't come or i know why this is happening uh or why you were there because i think you're like me except for that and that's why you don't kill anybody i don't know yeah i didn't read that initially as i I didn't put that together at first that he that they had that scene right after they were watching the news and they said it was a cop. I didn't connect that right away. But yeah. Chad, I had a thought that you could maybe use this as to support that maybe Scorsese doesn't like this movie. Do you think that like just with all the bad Boston accents and just like the rat shot at the end of the city, of Bo- like he's a New York guy. Do you think maybe this was his way of saying, yeah, we're better than you, Boston. I made good fellas. I can do a Boston <laughs> movie, but it's not going to be as good. No, this screams is like desperate to. I don't know. It's. I was I trying to know. give you an alley oop. No, nope. no, nope. not going. <laughs> not not taking the bait. <laughs> I'm delivering it to you on a fucking platter. <laughs> <laughs> not taking the bait. Um, I really, I really, 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 really want to like this movie because if you, again you come to me and you explain this movie to me, like what it's about, who's in it, who's directing it, I'm like fuck yeah. But I'm just it's so disappointed. But even just going in, but it's just like I'm just going to watch it and just kind of again, I'm going to see it for what it is. I'm still disappointed. <laughs> so did you guys know DiCaprio won best uh, supporting actor that or best actor that year? Who did? No, he did. Uh, hold on. Maybe I got that wrong. Maybe he was just nominated. No, he was. I checked James. Cause I was because I thought he was incredible. I was like, how did Leo not win? He was nominated for Blood Diamond. Oh. He was, yeah, I was gonna, yeah. He was nominated for a Blood Diamond, so same year. And yeah, I, as soon as I said that out loud, I'm like, wait, I think I have that wrong because he only won for The Revenant. So, but Chad, to your point then about Oscars and the way this movie is, yeah, this won Best Director. Yes, it won, won Best Picture that year. And actually, I'd say I'm happy on the Best Picture nomination just in the sense that I'm tired of movies getting Best Picture. And then I, it's a movie I only want to watch one time. So this is for you. This is probably the perfect Best Picture stereotype because you don't want to watch this ever again. But like when I think of movies like <laughs> Titanic winning over like Goodwill Hunting, that blows my mind to this day because like I don't want to continue. I don't want to watch uh, Titanic, you know, once a year or even every other uh, by yearly or whatever. Um, but Goodwill Hunting, I'll watch mm-hmm. fucking once every six months. Call it a day. Um, but so I think oh, like so totally what I was saying, like a, a makeup Oscar. <laughs> I think this is a, I think it is a makeup Oscar. I think that like for Scorsese, I think it was. So here's the director nominations that year. It was um, for the movie, the queen Babel United 93 uh, and letters to Iwo Jima and then the departed. So I'm looking at this. I'm like, yes, he out of all those movies um, and uh, who knows who's to say like Eastwood. Sorry, bud. You've had your time. You pretty much own Warner brothers. Like you have enough awards. But like Scorsese, I think this is finally the one where they're like, hey, we can finally give it to him because we effed him over. Like I didn't look back. But if you look at the year that Gangs of New York came out that everybody was like, like guns over, uh, I think that something else rightfully beat it because it was something just as good came out. And or when the Aviator came out or when Goodfellas came out, like this is the year where they're like, hey, this isn't his best, but he is the best man for the job. Like we owe him like <laughs> Plus, he was born in 1937, so... No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea when he was born, but... Um, <laughs> you also forgot um, Little Miss Sunshine for... Love that movie. Nominees for Best Picture. Oh, did I? Oh, then that's not on the list I'm looking at, so my bad. And that's, what, and that's who won Best Supporting is Alan Arkin for that one over Mark Wahlberg, which I completely agree with, except for uh, Jejma and Hanzu should have won for Blood Diamond, uh, in my opinion, that year. <laughs> Yeah, he was very good. Well, and to your point, James, like kind of thank God they did because I have you guys seen The Irishman? I thought that was incredible. If you can make it like the whole three hours, but 
that was same movie year as Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, 1917, Jojo Rabbit, and Parasite, which I'm told is very, very good. I still yeah, though, that's that. a that's a tough year. Those are all mm. fantastic movies. Yeah. Did Chad? Did you watch 1917? Yeah, yet? I just watched it like a week ago or two weeks ago. And what did you think? I was blown away. It's awesome. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's awesome. I, I was start. I started watching it to like. I was watching it and be like, okay, that's where they did like the the edit for like to go <laughs> like the cause oh like, yeah like where do they cut like single <laughs> yeah yeah but no it was i was blown away was was not that's what awesome. i was expecting so two questions then is did you watch either either 1917 or the departed did you watch them both on a television set or like your phone television okay good <laughs> sorry your your comments are like we can delete your track if you watch the departed on your phone like it it's a it's a cow's opinion at that point moo well <laughs> james yeah. Oh, I was just going to say 1917. That That's a special movie, not because it's so good, because it is. That was the last movie I think I saw in a theater before COVID. Mm. I'm so proud of you and jealous that I didn't see it in the theater. It's one I wanted to, and I just never got an opportunity to see it. Um, I would have much rather... <laughs> I wish I would have seen that in the theater rather than Tenant, to be honest. Both of them I've been happy to, but no, 1917, like when I watched that at home, like yeah blew me away and like instantly after the dvd was or blu-ray was over it went to like the special features and like i continued just watching like it was just so cool yeah my the last movie i went to in a theater was um kind of disappointing was um the rise of skywalker no i'm trying to think i'm like i was like in my head i'm like well sure it wasn't my favorite but i wouldn't be i like it's not disappointing or anything i think we all need to see those movies in the theaters oh yeah yeah true, true, true 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 um Let's talk screenplay. One best screenplay, William Moynihan for the adaptation of Yes, and you were right. It was Infernal Affairs, which I don't <laughs> know how I never knew that was the title. Um, but this guy, so William Moynihan. So uh, this is the first movie or, that he wrote is actually a movie I remember seeing in theater, enjoyed it, but haven't seen it since. And I keep waiting for it to show up on like the free channels like Roku or something yeah. like that. But Kingdom of Heaven. Um, is that the... Um... So what about Thanks like the, the, yeah, it's like the, well, it's like the crusades yeah, in the 12th yeah, century that's right. and, but it's also a Ridley Scott movie. So it's very gladiator esque feel to it. That's supposed to be um, really good. Like, yeah. And I just remember, really I remember enjoying it in the theater, but like I hadn't seen it since it came out. So when that came out, 2005. So I keep waiting for the free channels for it to come out. Cause I'm like, I want to watch this again. Cause I don't remember it at all. So it'll be like a, a fresh viewing. Um, but then yeah, I did. So I did kingdom of heaven, the departed, uh, Body of Lies, which I think is another Ridley Scott movie, if I remember correctly. Um, yep, it sure is. Uh, and then Edge of Darkness with Mel Gibson. Did I see that one? That was like no. Mel's return from being insane and ranting. Like that was like his first movie after that, um, which I thought he did well. Uh, otherwise, I don't know. The Gambler with Mark Wahlberg. Who cares? So <laughs> I don't know. He's got a couple. He's got a couple of good ones in there that I, I think are worth a watch. But um I just thought it was interesting that this one best like screenplay or adapted screenplay, especially one with so much, I don't know, swearing, like half the movie is just swear words. So like, how could this be a great adapt uh, adaptation? Great. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, uh, what else can we give them an award for? I mean, don't give me, don't get me wrong. The uh, banter and everything is witty. Like even the, like the scenes with Alec Baldwin and Mark Wahlberg or whatever are, uh, they're very funny, witty comments on there, but but then I think about like Matt Damon and or uh, DiCaprio's lines in the movie. And I don't think they're anything to cry home to about no. uh, original screenplay. Oh, no, that's not. I was just trying to find adapted screenplay to see like what else was up that year. But I don't know. It was a very good year. Jamie Casey, do you guys have any favorite scenes? Was that really stuck out to you? I have to say a very comical scene for me was when they brought um leo into the back room and they broke the cast off his arm and <laughs> and then uh frank costello comes in and he like grabs like a boot <laughs> he just starts whacking like, his arm <laughs> yeah. i was like come on i mean it's like frank he should have grabbed something like he should have had something back to like a bat or something oh his arm so, was already broken it still like made me cringe yeah. <laughs> to be honest <laughs> even though i do think it's funny that when he grabs his shoe every single time yeah uh, and then followed by the, what were you drinking? What you on? Oh, no, that was a different scene. Yeah. Sorry, when he's like, you on your fucking period. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so good. I want to hear from That's... Casey. Did you have any favorite scenes, Casey? 
I don't have anything. The only things that really stick out to me are the really awful scenes, like the the falling from the building and landing in front of Leo. Like I thought that was like pretty nuts. Um, and then obviously the elevator scene. Uh, you know, and I, you know what? I'll say, I'm gonna go out with a bang then. And uh, no pun I think intended. The right now, I think the ending ending with you know Matt Damon walking into the apartment and seeing Marky Mark and just going, yeah, okay, and just getting shot in the face. Like that was pretty satisfying, all things considered. So I agree with you on that. Make sure I I got this right. So Marky Mark, right? He's like actually the mole, right? No, 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 no. no. He's he was the cop. He he was he knew everything. Like he was trying to find this bad guy. And I think he, after Leo died, and then he he probably got tapes sent to him from Leo too. You know, I think Leo probably like blew the lid off before he went and died. That would have been. He knew what happened, and so he went and avenged Leo. Yeah, I think that my take is that he he was pissed at Matt Damon, like knowing that something is off. Not to mention, he's the one who got Queen and killed. There's no reason that he should have been followed. So either he figured out or assumed that he was the fucking rat, or it was just like, hey, he's the cause of the other dude's death. So it's just pissed at that situation. I do think for closure and understanding of that, I think it would have been if there was just the smallest fucking scene at a funeral where uh, Vera Farmiga handed him like the envelope or something. It would have been like, I don't know, nice little bow on it. But my assumption is he was just avenging Martin Sheen. He had to have known. There's no like based on the fact that Leo sent the letter to Matt Damon, that he gave the the letter to what's her face. Like he did all these things. I guarantee that he would have sent something to, to Marky Mark. Like the, I think we have that's an easy assumption to make, considering the other prep work he did before going after Matt Damon. I'm sorry, I keep using their actors' names. I'm really bad at remembering characters' names, but you follow. Oh yeah, yeah, I do. The I same. think it's <laughs> easier for everyone to follow this way. Yeah, if we were yeah. like, so when so when Costa can talk to Sullivan, and then you know Costello was there, and then <laughs> don't forget don't forget about Dewey. Wait, there's nobody named Dewey. <laughs> like I don't know. And it's just it's hilarious that he's wearing booties and like. Was oh, he wearing yeah. a hairnet too? No, I know. I was gonna say the only thing he was missing was a hairnet, which I yeah. think would have added. That's great. <laughs> and just like Matt Damon sees his face, yeah, okay. Okay. Or does he say yeah? What does he say? I don't even remember. It's like one word, yeah. He says okay, okay, okay. Boom. Yeah. With that scene Ugh. too, when you're talking about just like the heavy-handed like stuff with like the the rat <laughs> and. So like the bag of groceries that Damon is carrying, like when he drops them, it's the exact same items that uh, Costello buys for him in that opening scene at the little bodega or whatever market. Wait, that what? Oh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't catch that. that. Yeah. Catch. How about, um, bull- how about- bullshit? There was like a bagel on top of that bag, bag at the end. <laughs> There's no, yeah, no bagel in another one in that bag. There was no fucking comic books, no Wolverine comics. <laughs> I had that Wolverine comic. I know. I looked to see which one that was too. I, I don't think I own that it, one. <laughs> it was like number. I bet my brother probably or does something. I don't know. Uh, um, <laughs> it was right before the Savage Land uh, time story arc. <laughs> but, uh, how about uh, Jack Nicholson's rat face? Oh, so good. <laughs> he, he, like, if anything, he should have been nominated for, for just the rat face. The rat like, face. best impression of an animal ever, hands down. <laughs> Um, if it if it becomes a meme, does it is it deserving of an Oscar? <laughs> oh god! Great I mean, yeah. I feel like in two thousand seven, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think today, no, because no. <laughs> like we can just do it on a dime. Yeah. But two thousand seven, it didn't seem like it was as easy. Um, it was Wolverine comic number eleven, Chad. Oh, it was okay. I was way off. Dated then. early September nineteen eighty nine. Hmm. All right. Wow. So that does not, that's a little anachronistic comic mm-hmm. book in there. Yeah, the maybe it didn't have line. that one. I didn't start reading Wolverine until 91. So this was not my favorite scene, but something I did notice this time is um, when Costello goes to the opera and then he brings back his girlfriend and the lady of the night and he has that big bowl of cocaine and, oh, you know, thrown everywhere. I'm like, oh, he's practicing for Wolf of Wall Street. Like Scorsese, he's... You know, getting his ducks in a row for Wolf of Wall Street. I don't know. There was something about that mind. scene that made me think to myself. I was like, "Oh, Casino did it better." <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! What? 
No, the casino's one I haven't seen in a while. I love that movie. Yeah, it's really good. I just keep thinking of <laughs> whenever I think of Casino now, like the only thing I think of is like the intro to do you remember the uh what's his face? It's like Spy Hard, the guy who does like naked guns. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is that character? Uh, oh god. Leslie Nielsen. Leslie, Leslie Nielsen. Yeah. Leslie Nielsen, yeah. I want to be like Liam Neeson. <laughs> no, that's not right. <laughs> Leslie Nielsen. But like and but like the scene is like the car blows up and then he's just falling for the ten minutes of the credits yeah. <laughs> like in the sky. <laughs> oh man. So good. <laughs> Also, Chad, here we go. It's a Reddit thing. In The Departed, Frank Costello gives a Wolverine comic to young Sullivan. The comic didn't release until 1989, long after the scene is meant to take place. God, movies are bullshit. Bullshit. I mean, God, nothing is real and everyone smokes in Hollywood. No. Scorsese is not known for his uh, like um, continuity in his shots either. <laughs> But that's the thing is like you'd probably look at that and like even the guns like somebody's going to catch. Well, that one, that's a Glock 82. <laughs> I, I love when people online like analyze every scene for most things. It's like, do you guys remember like the last episode of I know we just kind of talked about this earlier was the Sopranos. Like, I don't know. Did everybody watch the last episode? Jamie? I haven't watched the episode. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know it. I didn't watch it, but I, I just think it's funny that like, well, I just remember when the episode aired on like whatever a Sunday night. And then by Monday, somebody like looked at it like scene by scene. It was like in the last 10 minutes, like, look how they're eating their appetizers. Like they're like (laughs) chicken wontons. They're eating them like they're uh, communion wafers. And they're like, everybody's just like, wait, what the F? To the knife and the plate. (laughs) Oh, my God. And they're like, and like to indicate motive and Meadow trying to parallel park, but she can't. So she tries six or seven times is like basically relating to her whole life. <laughs> like, wait, what the <laughs> hell is happening? And I just, so the fact that like somebody like, was like the groceries that fell are the same groceries that <laughs> fell in the beginning of the movie. It's like, Oh my God. Like it's, I mean, the attention to detail on things these days are pretty, pretty incredible. Also means that COVID has been a long, around a lot longer than I think. Cause people have way too much time on their hands. Oh, hell yeah. So really quick before we go, where does this movie fall like within like the Scorsese um, directed films for you? The ones that you've seen. But like on a scale of one to ten or like no, what just do you mean? like to say like top middle, like compared to like his other. films. Oh, I would say this goes in the top just because it is one that I watched regularly. Like even when you guys just mentioned Wolf of Wall Street, I'm like, man, that's a movie I definitely haven't seen since the theater. But I really like that movie. Yeah. Um. So there's just a lot of Scorsese ones that. I need to revisit again. Um, like casino. I hadn't seen in a long time, but I do own it. And like even Kings of New York, the way Jamie described it, I saw it in the theater with my friend's parents and I was all jacked about seeing this movie. And I felt, uh, let down a little bit, I guess when I saw it, but after watching it again, like a home viewing, knowing, okay, this is what's happening. Like I fully have a ton of respect for that movie. Like that's a hard movie to put together costume sets, everything in that movie. Even the actors, I think crushed, um, like uh, Cameron Diaz, I think did a great job as uh, her character too. So I don't know. I think it ranks high for me, but there's definitely a lot of Scorsese movies that I need to revisit. Well, it is number one for me because I've only seen this in Shutter Island. Oh, all right. Really? And I like Shutter Island, but I like this more than Shutter Island. Did you not do the Goodfellas? uh, That's what I was going to ask. That was before before my time. time, Yeah. Oh, that's before my time as well. Do we need to do a, a repeat? (laughs) <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, that, so you haven't seen dive into more Scorsese movies, like yeah, you haven't Last Temptation of Christ and stuff. You haven't seen like Wolf of Wall Street and no Taxi no. Driver. I'm the least movie buff of all of us, which is why I'm the one that like watches a movie and then goes and YouTube's for takes. Yeah. I'm not great <laughs> at takes, but I'm good at accumulating the interesting tidbits. I don't know. I see myself as that a good regurgitator. I always learn something from the information you bring to the table, Casey. Every so time. I, I concur. I concur as well. Yeah. I For Aww, me, I guys. think it's, it's true. Oh, gosh. Oh, it's golly. True. Well, I mean, Case, I, I mean, I think that you've seen Martin Scorsese's, like, the, the love story he directed. Mm. The Michael Jackson bad video. Oh, oh God. Yes. <laughs> or do you I just remember that. the Weird Al Yankovic fat video? <laughs> I have seen both of those. Um, otherwise, Case, have you seen The Color of Money with Paul Newman? Oh, I love that movie. Nine. 
the sequel to The Hustler. The, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, there might be a couple movies that, like, you didn't realize were Scorsese ones, but maybe not. No, I'm sitting here scrolling the IMDb to see what I'm... I didn't know Shutter Island was him, so there you go. Oh, then... Oh, Case, you've seen Hugo. Mm, have I, though? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> nope. All right, I'm done. I certainly haven't. <laughs> I agree. And Jamie, you said this ranks pretty high for you as far as Scorsese flicks. Yeah, yeah. I with the disclaimer, I have some major gaps like uh, Casino and Raging Bull, Cape Fear. So I, I have a lot of work to do there. Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, Goodfellas shit. It's hard to I think it's just an age thing. You know, I think I'm, I was the right age when I saw The Departed versus Goodfellas. So I think that's why it probably edges it. But I mean, Goodfellas is a masterpiece. Um, and I wanted to <laughs> share time to go to sleep. Time for bed. <laughs> There's a. Have you guys heard of Devil in the White City? Yeah, uh, I'm excited book? that it's coming out. Yes, yes. Scorsese's doing a miniseries with oh. Leo as H. H. Holmes. So that is great news. Cool. I didn't realize it was going to be a miniseries. That's awesome. I'm loving these uh, limited series that are coming out where it's like a great story, fucking kill, crushing, like just that Mayor of Easttown one, even like. Seven episodes, all the actors are just high level crushing it, and then the story's over, and I don't have to like be like, oh my god, I have to wait another year and a half for another season. Or with COVID times, it's like three years, and are they going to make another right. season? <laughs> Hashtag Lost in Space season three. Hashtag Stranger Things season four. That's why um, I thought The Watchmen was really good, right? That's a one and done. Um, White Lotus. Yeah, Come White on. Lotus. I can't, yeah, I lost, I lost, um, I couldn't get past the second episode. Three is where um, it takes off. My wife, my wife, she liked it, but I don't know. I just, I don't have, <laughs> it's my whole, uh, like it's my econ. What do you call it? Um, economics of Chad's time for entertainment. <laughs> like my, I hear that. Yeah. Time is a scarce resource. So I try to, you know, use it well for like, Star Wars visions and uh, other. <laughs> I'm getting really excited to watch uh, Foundation though tomorrow. I'm really stoked for that because it has one of my favorite uh, actors, uh, Jared Harris, aka David Robert Jones, aka <laughs> I can't remember his character's names from other movies or TV shows, but the famous Russian actor Jared Harris, the famous Russian actor Jared Harris. We know how you feel about accents in movies. I'm not even gonna. Uh, entertain you with where this movie falls in my Scorsese flicks picks but uh I would do say my some of my favorites are uh Casino, Goodfellas and uh Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, is that it? Did we do it? Are we done? I feel as though this movie has n- negative impacts on your mental health. No, I've, I think it, it's, it I think you, it's living. It's in it your brain. It's like a, makes a you nauseous. Ported in, yeah. <laughs> no, it's this is this display. was like cathartic. You know, like good. This, okay, I'm done good. with it. I'm glad it's over. You know, it's like I finally buried. Again, if you listen to this, write in and uh, anything about the departed, and we'll pick the best one if we ever receive one over the next five years. And um, yeah, I'll send that to you for free. <laughs> I kind of feel like I'm Chad wanted there five years. <laughs> yeah. I kind of feel like Chad wanted to do this movie so we could, like, when we make the comments about Chad hating it, like, we're like, no, you know, he's exhausted everything he needed to say about this. We don't have to make fun of it anymore. If only Jamie would watch The Mandalorian, we could stop talking about that on our podcast. Yes, <laughs> but... yes, Jamie, I'm, I'm, I know you probably don't even really care, but I'm surprised like none of it hasn't been spoiled for you through like trailers. But I digress. I mean, I know the child's name is not really the child. I found that out. Yeah. It's Gogalogal or whatever his name is. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> Spoiler. Spoiler. Gogalogal. Gogalogal. <laughs> That's pretty good. I, I know like the that part one. where he's like carrying around Anakin's head is the best. <laughs> <laughs> Master Jedi Gogalogo. <laughs> Gogalogo. He has like the 50 bladed lightsaber. Oh my gosh! It's and like and they shoot out like lasers, but the lasers comes back. It's so cool. There is there is that first episode at Star Wars Visions. There's a really cool lightsaber. It's fucking rad. Before we go, I want to thank you for downloading this episode of Movie Time Machine. Remember, new episodes drop on Fridays. Please send your questions, comments, and feedback to moviemachinepod at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter at moviemachinepod. 
Thank you for listening, and we'll catch you next time. See ya. Say hi to your mother for me. Thank you.